Okay, guys, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're here with Teddy Allen. Uh, I will open the floor for questions. I'll start with Chris Bassett first. Hey, Teddy, I guess just uh, 24 hours away now. What, what's the mood kind of like with you guys and, and how ready are you to actually play a game? Um, everybody's just hyped and happy, energy. Um, it's been a long time coming with everything going on this year and uh, also with some of the guys. It's been a long time since they were able to play on this stage. So a lot of, we're just ready. We're definitely ready. Okay, Sam McEwen. Hey, Teddy, what, what have you guys done to kind of ramp up to the – you're going to be playing three games in, in four days here. That's going to be a lot. Um, what have you guys done to kind of ramp up for that, and, and, and how good will it feel to not just play one game and then have to sit for a week, but to play a bunch in a row? Um, I think it's something we're all accustomed to uh, over the years of coming up playing AAU. And, um, it's definitely a challenge. You know, none of us in college have played back-to-backs or um, – rigorous schedules like that, but that's the nature of the beast this year. So we're just looking forward to it. And yeah, it's good to get to play three games in the first week. How much better do you feel like you can get in that short amount of time with that much basketball? I mean, it definitely plays into our hands just being able to have a lot of trial and error period early. Um, hopefully not too much error, but just the fact that we get to play um, there's no better way to gain chemistry and than to play together for real. Michael Bruns. Hey Teddy, coach had said you guys are going to do some scrimmages in PBA the last few weeks and, and kind of you know get a little up the intensity a little bit. What have you kind of learned about this team and, and your teammates, I guess, from those types of uh, experiences so far? Um, I learned um, that this team has a lot of weapons. Um, that we don't, nobody has to um, try to play hero ball because we got a bunch of players who can do a lot of different things. So if we just trust uh, Coach Fred's system and and do the things that we're, we're getting harped on us every day, then we should be successful. One, one quick follow-up. In those situations, I mean, when you guys are kind of, you have a lot of weapons, but is there one guy that's kind of the, I guess the, the general on the floor, so to speak, that kind of keeps everything moving in the right direction for you? Yeah, like um, Trey and Lano, probably. Um, Kobe, our point guards, usually uh, kind of keep our pace a little bit. Um, those guys are all, they're, they're not new to this, so they're all um, good floor generals. Thank you. Kevin Suits? Hey, Teddy, obviously the uh, past week has been quite the adventure for you guys from a scheduling standpoint. How did you guys as players um, just emotionally handle the fact that uh, some teams came and went from the Golden Window Classic and the schedule that uh, is in place for this week? Um, I, I, I don't think it's that hard because this, the, the, like I said earlier, this is the nature of the beast this year. You know, we know that there's going to be teams pulling out, teams getting positives, rescheduling, cancellations. It's just, I mean, we've known this since the summertime, so it's not really too much to really worry about now. We, we knew, we was worried, we was hoping we could even play, so I guess we'll take what we can get. Jason Hahn. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, Teddy. What have you been able to uh, learn generally from the uh, Husker coaching staff and how have they helped you to uh, improve? Um, I think, um, the biggest thing I learned um, was probably just how simple the game is. You know, coaches have preached it to me before, but, um, you know, Coach Fred and his staff obviously are a high level group. And just to know that they are high level and that the game is that simple, that's just something that I've been learning. And like I said earlier, it, you could see in our team, like, if we just play simple and just make the simple play, then a lot can happen good. Okay, we'll take a couple more here. Robin Washington. 
Hey, Teddy, I know you've got a couple of scrimmages in PBA. Uh, are you prepared at all for playing a game in an empty arena? And just what difficulties might come with that? Um, you know, obviously based on playing in front of fans before in the past. Um, I mean, I think the only thing to get over is if you're a person who really likes like the environment. Like, but I mean, I, I'm a hooper. I like to hoop, so it's it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, like it makes no difference at all. I'm just glad we get to play. Okay, we'll finish this session with Matt Foster. Uh, hey, Teddy. Just through these scrimmages so far, how where do you feel the chemistry is at with this group with so many new pieces coming in this year and being a day away from your first game? I mean, I think our chemistry is further along than you would expect from a team uh, uh, that's that came together this short short ago and with guys that were sitting out. Um, like, it, it's probably everything you could want as far as chemistry. Like, there's not a lot of selfishness out here, not a lot of egos, just we're all just trying to do our job and um, play our role. Um, obviously, like, there's work, stuff works itself out a different way during games and stuff, but I think the chemistry is everything we, we would want it to be at this point of time. Okay, thank you guys. We'll switch, we'll stop for this group and we'll switch to Trey McGowan here momentarily. We're back with Trey McGowan's. I'll open the floor for questions. I will start with Chris Bassmat. Hey, Trey, as you guys have kind of, you know, gone through the last couple of weeks and, and seen, you know, teams test positive and games get switched around and everything, what's kind of gone through you guys' minds? And is that something you guys have talked about at all? Um, yeah, most definitely. We talked about it. But um, the biggest focus on us, for us, is just making sure we're not one of the teams we have to cancel. Um, because, I mean, this team this year, um, we, we got big goals and dreams we hope to accomplish. And uh, we don't want the vi coronavirus um, to affect um, um, what we're trying to do. Robin Washit. Hey, Trey, you guys have had, I think, three big scrimmages over the last week or two. Uh, what have you learned about the team in those competitive settings? And I guess, uh, was there anything that stood out that maybe you didn't notice in the uh, maybe regular practices you've had up until those points? Um, really just how, how, how much talent we have, and, um, really the depth. Um, everybody um, can play, everybody can get to a bucket, everybody can um, do everything we need um, to be able to win. So the biggest thing for us um, is just Keep on continuing to bond in jail. Kevin Suits. Hey, Trey, what do you think of the uh, games you have coming up this week? Not only the fact that you get to play, but it seems like you're going to face some pretty high level uh, competition uh, straight out the gate. Um, I mean, it, it definitely feels good. Um, um, I mean, I ain't really thought about it too much besides finally um, being able to play because it feels like it, it's been like forever because everything going on, so much uncertainty. But I mean, we're, we're just ready to play and compete. Sam McEwen. Hey, Trey. Um, what what all have you guys been doing uh, to to make sure you don't get the virus? There's only two guys on your teams have got it, according to Coach Hoiberg. And so, you know, you guys are a team that has to try to avoid it for several months. What are you guys doing and what, what all, what, you know, what all protocols are you following to get that done? Um, really, uh, I mean, everybody's been staying in the house, um, or being in a gym. 
Um, and then we're a pretty um, together group, um, at least more together than um, I've, where I've been at. So, I mean, the guys, the guys um, love to be around each other. So, I mean, we're not really, we don't really be out unless we're at the gym or grabbing food. So we just all be in a room together, just chilling, playing video games. And obviously I want to ask, because I think you can talk about this now that your brother is signed with Nebraska, but you have a very close family. Uh, I'm sure you were excited to see him sign. Are are they coming up for Thanksgiving or do you kind of just Zoom with them virtually? Are they going to watch from home on Thanksgiving Day? That kind of thing. Um, I think they were going to try to come up here, but um, when they found out it wasn't fans weren't allowed, um, they just stayed at home because they were supposed to come up, I think, this weekend. But um, they called me the other day and said that um, they heard fans couldn't come. So he was like, they'll just see me whenever um, that's allowed, if it's allowed. What do you think of your brother signing with, with Nebraska? Um, I definitely um, think it's great for this program, and um, especially for him, I'm excited, um, especially the things I've seen since I've been here, um, whether it's with the coaches, um, in the weight room, just overall, um, the growth, the, um, the help, um, him get to the next level and pursue his dreams. Jason Hahn? From your, uh, from your first season to your second season at Pitt, your assist percentage improved uh, considerably, uh, about 10.1%. Are we going to expect to see first season Trey at Pitt or second season Trey at Pitt in terms of assist percentage? Um, neither. Um, I feel like this summer, um, I, can, we, I just kept continuing to work hard. Um, last summer, I thought I worked as hard as I had in my life. Um, and then this summer, um, I just took it up a whole nother level. And then just um, just being around the guys and coaches and all them just um, helping me, whether it's film or other stuff, um, I feel like um, this is going to definitely be a special season for me as well as every other um, guy on this team. Um, we're a group of hard workers. Okay, we'll finish the session with Kevin Suits. Hey, Trey, I think you kind of answered the question I was just going to have, but, you know, you guys have worked really hard behind closed doors. Fans haven't seen what you've been uh, uh, working on and uh, accomplishing uh, privately. When, when we watch you starting tomorrow, what can fans expect to see out of this group in terms of, like, what you guys do well and what you bring to the table? Um, we have, we have um, a bunch of scores, and um, the team, um, we're a real unselfish team. Um, everybody's happy for one another's success. And um, ultimately, I think that that's probably um, going to be the biggest thing this season. Um, as long as we keep doing everything like that, um, I, I think we're going to have a pretty successful um, season. Okay, that will conclude our wrap, our wrap of Trey. We will be back momentarily with Coach Hoiberg.
Okay, we are back with Coach Hoiberg. I'll open the floor for questions. I'll start with Michael Brunst. Hey, Fred, the last time we talked to you, you said your guys are still planning to do a couple more scrimmages in PBA. I mean, I guess what did you kind of learn more about this team in, in those sessions? And, and I guess what are you kind of eager to, to see once you actually get going here on Wednesday? Yeah, well, you know, I'll start with this. Our, our guys are really excited about going out and playing against another opponent. They're sick of beating on each other, uh, you know, going all the way back to June when we started with this, with uh, when the NCAA uh, gave the clearance to start individual workout. So uh, it'll be great to get out there and compete against another opponent. And we've got three really good tests coming up here, starting with tomorrow tomorrow afternoon's game against McNeese. They're a very, very talented team uh, that has a lot of weapons. Uh, they've got the best shooter in the country that we're going to have to know where he is at all times. And, uh, you know, an all-conference guard uh, in Lawson as well. So they've got really good guard play. And uh, we're going to have to be on our toes and have to hopefully get off to a great start, uh, you know, with, with this game and obviously uh, starting off strong uh, with our season. As far as what we saw with our scrimmages, a lot of the same things. I've been really impressed with this group, how unselfish they have played. Yeah, hopefully that carries over. As I talked to him about the last couple of days leading into our opener, uh, the importance of continuing to go out and do the things that have made us successful. We don't need to go out there now and reinvent the wheel and go out there and try to do it on our own. Uh, you know, when adversity hits, stick with the plan and, and get good movement and try to get great possessions, uh, both offensively and defensively. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're excited to get started tomorrow. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a great test. Uh, hopefully we come out and play well. Chris Bassnett. Hey, Fred, I feel like we'll probably ask you this a lot this year, but just overall health of the team, everybody's good as far as testing and, and injuries and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we, we've got one more round of testing tonight. We're going to test them again at 7 o'clock tonight, and we'll, uh, we'll have an update in the morning uh, with that. Hopefully everything goes well. Uh, with our testing, uh, you know, again, I give our guys a lot of credit for really doing a great job uh, to this point of keeping this thing, uh, you know, at a distance. You know, obviously numbers are going up. You see teams shutting down all over the country right now. Uh, you know, we just have to continue to, to stress making the right decisions. And you can make all the right decisions and still get it. So, you know, it's just one of those things where uh, hopefully it doesn't go through our team. Um, you know, again, you see it all over the place right now. I saw a couple more games, tournaments got shut down. Uh, again, this morning, you'll probably see a few more uh, get shut down leading into tomorrow uh, on the opener for most college teams. So, you know, as, as of right now, uh, we're doing good, but, you know, we'll give you an update uh, tomorrow morning after the, we get the results back later tonight. Jacob Padilla. Hey, Coach. Um, I, what, I just well, I was curious about kind of what's your mindset going into the season where you talked about things are kind of changing from day to day. Normally, basketball coaches love structure and know, uh, you love kind of knowing what exactly you're going to have coming up. How are you going to handle this season where things could change from day to day? Yeah, again, Jacob, the, the biggest thing that I'll continue to stress and what I keep talking to our guys about is all we can do is control the things, um, you know, in front of us. And, you know, those things could spiral out of control with everything going on. We're ready for it. We're, we're prepared for it. Uh, but we just need to go out there and prepare as if we're going to play 27 games uh, starting with tomorrow's home opener. So, uh, you know, it, it is. It's been a really bizarre preseason. It is as strange a time as I've ever been through in, in my many years in this game as a player, an executive, and as a coach. So uh, we just got to continue to stress worrying about the things that we can control. And that's playing hard. It's preparing the right way. Uh, putting yourself, uh, you know, pr uh, trying to stay out of harm's way. Uh, so, you know, and again, our guys have done a great job with that uh, so far. So hopefully we'll continue on. Uh, but we, again, we do have a plan if things, if things do break down. Kevin Sids. Hey, Fred, obviously the uh, field for the Golden Window Classic changed here over the past week. How stressful uh, has that stretch been for you? And was there doubt or concern that the event would be canceled altogether? Well, we, we've had three scouting reports done uh, that, you know, it turned out we're not going to play those opponents. So, you know, coaches, we put in a lot of work behind the scenes to put a game plan together to get prepared for what our schedule uh, is going to look like. And obviously that's changed. We've had three uh, teams that we thought we were going to play that we were pretty much done with the scouting report. And then it turns out we're not going to play. So, you know, that's just the things I'm talking about as far as how strange this uh, preseason has been. Hopefully with where things are right now, uh, you know, we can get our games in. Is, is it going to 100% happen? Absolutely not. Um, you know, the likelihood of something happening 
uh, I would think is pretty high. You know, we've got a 10-day window after our last non-conference game against Creighton before we open up against Wisconsin. So if we do have to postpone a game or uh, find another opponent if we cancel, we do have a window where we can potentially do that. But, <clears throat> you know, it, it is. It's, it's been a really, really strange time for coaches. You, it, it, never have I seen a time where you prepare for a game, you're getting a scouting report done, and then you find out a couple days later you're not going to play that opponent. Uh, but we've got this uh, Golden Window tournament set now. Uh, again, we're going to play three really good teams starting tomorrow with McNeese, uh, then Nevada, and uh, uh, you know a very tough North Dakota State team. So these will be three good tests and, and good games for us. Matt Foster. Fred, a lot of times players feed off the energy of the crowd during a game. Um, how are you guys going to have to build that kind of energy from the sidelines this season? We, we've talked a lot about that. It, you know, if we're, <clears throat> excuse me, if we're out there having a sluggish practice or we don't get off to a great start, we bring them in and say, guys, this is the atmosphere we're playing in this year. We have got to find a way to muster up our own energy. Uh, we're not going to have the crowd, you know, one of the best in the country, PBA, to get us into these games. We've got to come out with great energy from the start. Uh, a lot of times, you know, how you start the game is uh, determines how it finishes. So we have to come out with great energy from the, from the get-go. We have to communicate. We have to battle through runs. This is a team that is very capable of going on huge runs. Uh, you know, Cookshausen is, they put 55 in this building in a state championship game. Um, you know, being from Scot Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. So, you know, just uh, uh, we have to withstand that. We have to find a way to keep our poise uh, and stick together and continue to communicate and do the things, hopefully, that, w that can get us back in. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's something that is a concern. Uh, but, again, we're all in the same boat with this. Not many of us are going to have fans in the building. Sam McEwen. Hey, Fred. How do you view the, the, these three games? Do you view them as, as a whole? In other words, you hope you get better – by the end of it um, and, and you kind of take all three games as a lump or do you kind of go through each process um, every single day you play? Yeah, we'll, we'll take each, each, each uh, take it as a process, Sam. And, you know, normally at this time of year, you have a closed door scrimmage where you learn a lot about your team, where you can put your, yourselves through all types of different scenarios. You can practice all kinds of different situations. Uh, we didn't have that this year. And then you can get out and play an exhibition game, and then you learn even more about yourselves. Did you correct things that you needed to work on? Uh, so being the first test for everybody, there's going to be a lot of things that we need to correct and we need to get better at in a short amount of time with short preps going into our second and third games. Uh, we just have to worry about the task at hand. Uh, tomorrow, that's McNeese. Uh, you know, when that game's over, we'll, what, whatever happens, we'll put it behind us and get ready for the next one against Nevada. Uh, but that's, that's all we can do right now is go one at a time, be in the first contest. Uh, again, it's a unique situation, unique season with not having uh, the preseason scrimmage and preseason exhibition game. Uh, so we'll learn a lot about ourselves tomorrow in a real game type situation. Who, who are your starters? Uh, we're still determining that. We've got it to six, and we'll, uh, we'll figure that out and, and get it to you tomorrow. Okay, Jason, uh, do you know who your six are? Yeah, I do. We'll do two more. We'll do Jason and then Robin after that. Um, hello, Fred. Just um, building off of uh, Sam's question a little bit, do you have a plan about uh, rotations given the close proximity of these three games? Or are you going to play it by ear? Yeah, it, it, we, we'll have a plan for rotations going into each game. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the six, Sam. So it's, uh, it, it's Trey, uh, Ivan, uh, Thor, Delano, uh, who did I say, Seamus? Uh, Lat and huh? Ted and Teddy. So of those of those six, you know, five of those guys uh, will start tomorrow, and then you know, as far as a rotation, we'll get that figured out. We have a plan going in, but you always have adjustments ready uh, based on any type of situation, foul trouble, uh, anything like that. So you know, again, we'll we'll take it one game at a time, and and hopefully come out and play well, and and then move on to game two when uh, when we're done tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we'll finish. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot bigger than you were last year, just in general. You're like you're moving away from the small ball lineups. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see how it plays out again. I, I do like the versatility of our group. I think we've got length across the board. Uh, you know, when you got a guy, guys like Delano and Trey in your backcourt at 6'5 and 6'8, six, six, uh, 
uh, that can facilitate your offense. Thor, Teddy, Lat, you know, all, all uh, pretty similar in size, uh, you know, with Ivan out there as well that has a lot of experience. So, uh, you know, I do like the versatility because of the size across the board that we have this year. Okay, we'll finish with Robin Watson. Fred, you got a roster full of guys that um, obviously have some professional aspirations and guys that haven't played a game in a long time, but listening to Teddy and Trey, they kind of echo what you say where they have a bunch of players that know they can score, but nobody has to play hero ball. They mentioned unselfish as well. Uh, I guess what was that something you had to hammer home with these guys? I mean, obviously everybody's kind of got their own individual aspirations, but to bring that collection of players together to have that unselfish mindset uh, I guess how did that come about and how difficult is it going to be to maintain that over the course of the season now that you're starting to play games yeah well uh, we've talked a lot about that Robin that, that's a huge thing going into the season and that is one of the tough things about not having an opportunity to go out there and play another team to this point usually you have the exhibition you have the scrimmage uh, so you know it is something that we stress we've got a lot of guys capable of having big nights uh, you know, when I look back at teams that I had at Iowa State, we'd have five or six guys averaging double figures, and everybody benefits when you win, and that's the most important thing. Uh, so we're going to have different guys on different nights, and that has to be okay. Uh, you may have a game where you score 20, the next night you have four. Uh, if you win, you know, everything is, is great, and, and that's the bottom line. If everybody's all about the team and, and all about uh, the end result, uh, winning, uh, that's the important thing, and we have stressed that a lot to this group because we have so many people that are capable. And that is one of the hard things, uh, the hardest thing about coaching is how you distribute the minutes. Uh, we do have a lot of guys that deserve minutes. We have a lot, a lot of guys that deserve to start. We'll see who goes out there and earns <clears throat> the clutch minutes late in games. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's, it's a tough job. But if you're going to have a successful team, you have to have role acceptance. Uh, when my team's at Iowa State, when we had five or six in double figures, a lot of those guys ended up playing in the NBA, and the biggest reason is because we had success. Thank you, guys. That will end our press conference. Thank you, guys.